Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM in the UK. This is part two of my Power VS series for just two bands a day. This time we're looking a little bit hands on and getting to the virtual machine over the internet. In part one, we covered the six mini hurdles creating an account, finding Power VS, pricing, adding a credit card, and creating your resource, a project. Then we saw some screenshots of creating the virtual machine and accessing it. This time we're going to do some hands-on live creating a virtual machine so you can see all the details and then getting access via the internet. So I'm going to go to cloud.ibm.com with my IBM ID. So I've logged in. I'm looking at the resource list. If you can't find this up here, press the uh, pancakes resource list and you end up here. Down in here you will find services so here are my two i've actually just named them by where the actual location is washington dc and dallas the 12 and 13 are in texas okay so we'll go into our texas resource so that's where the virtual machines will be created and i've got two in here already let's do create an instance All right let's do find some unique name that helps only instance ones if you change that to a, another number in here you actually get some extra questions about do you want each of your instances to be in different machines and that sort of thing but uh, we don't need that for the simple case I'm not going to pin it as we said before we want them to move it if they need to take a service down ssh key yep we'll have one of those uh, choose one here that's my pre-created ones i've actually added those if you go to the, the create button here, you give it a name and then you copy your public SSH key into here. You run the SSH minus sign key gen command to actually create those. But I've already got one in here. I'm going to slide down to the boot image. We're going for AX, of course. Then we're going to select the latest one. 5.2 TL5, good. Then we're going to select the discs, the cheaper discs in here. You can see the price is uh, building up in here. And which machine type is it on? I think this will affect the price. The S922. Whoa, we're up to $400. Does it actually say it's in months? But okay, let's actually change that to a proper country. Or proper currency there we go 300 pounds that seems like a lot ah hang on we got dedicated in here let's go shared and uncapped that took the price down to a hundred pounds but it's defaulted to here the core to one well we can get away with a bit less than that go down to quarter and ah here we go we got the sort of regular ballpark price for things in here memory two i still room four that's a good number to start with the price has gone up a little bit there it's costing us some money but that's what i prefer we can do some caching didn't really spot this the first time but when you attach storing volumes these are in addition to the default image which is sitting in a disk of x 7.2 tl5 in this case so we don't actually need a disk we can have a private network where we specify the IP address ranges and, and then have to plumb that in so that we use a VPN to get to my computer room. Uh, but I'm quite happy to put it on a public network. Perhaps I'd want to log in it remotely um, or even run a website on it or something. I don't know. So we'll go the public network route. That's good. And we're done. Uh, the price down in here. Going to click OK. And we just create instance. We got a few pop-up messages coming in the first couple of seconds. There we go. The uh, virtual instance. I think they mean virtual server instance, but there we are. Okay, it's actually created now and it's in the, the build phase. If we click on here, we'll see there's no options to actually connect to it or anything like that. 
Now I have noticed I'm using the Chrome browser in here. Um, this will actually change in a minute or two to warning. And then it will sit there forever. And then if you do a refresh of your screen, it'll eventually tell you that it's gone active. And in those minutes in between, you could have logged in, but it didn't tell you that. So I'm going to every minute or so refresh the screen. Okay, it's gone to warning here. If I click on here, I've got some more things up in here. Now we'll click console. This may or may not work. We still might be a bit too late now. It says it can't be opened just yet. Please try again in a few minutes. Nice and uh, polite. So we'll just wait another minute or two and refresh the screen again. Still too early. And this time, there we just caught it doing some uh, work on the screen, building things up, and um, we'll log into root. There's no password, so we'll set that now. Now I'm setting the password because we have to have a password set before it allow access in from the internet. So we might as well get that done early on. Now this console, you can't uh, cut, well, it says you can mark things up, but I haven't managed to actually do any, any cutting and pasting. which makes you things very frustrating if you wanted to put something in here. We put in that uh, public key, didn't we? So let's try um, and find that. There it is. And we have it there. So that's okay. So it took that from the user interface and put that in the, in the right place. Um, can we uh, ping somebody from here? Uh, 
Yes, we can. That's good. We can also got those uh, yum tools all available. We'll show those in another video. But we now want to get to internet access to this particular virtual machine. Let's move that out of the way for now. Of course, this is the partition. We need to know the IP address. This is the internal IP address. So we can see these virtual machines can talk to each other. If we actually click on the details for our new virtual machine, we have some details. So when I did this and went to the movie, we have the attached volume in here. This is the one with the operating system in it. You can see it's 20 gigabytes in here. And the network interfaces is in here. And we have, this is the external IP address. I'll now use my X Windows session here to my home machine in the IBM computer room. If we ping that IP address, yeah, we can see it's up there. And if I want to log in, SSH, that IP address. And um, do you want to continue anyway? It says yes. And it's asking for a password there for NAG. That's me. And so I'm going to type that in now. And it doesn't like it. So what I'm going to do is come out. Try that again. Looking in it because I haven't yet created my typical username on that virtual machine yet so let's go for the root user and I do know the password because I just set that up and it lets me in okay excellent now I have the ability to cut and paste things uh, in and out of the screen to do some uh, simple work and I can also use SFTP to copy files in and out if I want to add things to the instance so let's clear the screen there Given we can't cut and paste into the console and it will time out after I think it's 15 minutes, which is really painful. The virtual console is really only there for emergency use only if you haven't got a direct network working. Just for completeness, we'll go back to uh, here and look at all our servers. We've still got a warning up in here. That quarter of an hour later, I'll refresh the screen. There we go. And yes, it did actually go active. Just a bit lazy updating the screen. Now you know, you'll be okay. That's it for part two then, hands-on and getting on the network. Part three is hands-on with disks. If you've enjoyed or learned something in this video, then please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe.